Hello Brick Smarties, Brick Smarty here. Anyone here like dragons? Of course, we love dragons, but when it comes to Lego, which one? Lego have a number of dragons in various sets in the Ninjago series and Harry Potter series, but how do they shape up? There are a number of recurring themes and problems with dragons, so how does each model address these issues and which is the most fun to build? Well, today we're going to take a look at the Ninjago Fire Attack Dragon and the Hungarian Horntail Dragon from the Harry Potter series. We'll look at the basics, the builds, then review and compare. This video is a bit different from my normal content, but don't worry, I've been working on a new Deep Sea Creature series and this will be out in a few weeks. Let me know what MOCs you think I should create to complete the series. I've also got a number of MOCs in mind for a new Majestic Tiger series, so this will probably be next in line after that. Before I get any further into this, I would like to thank everyone who's subscribed and for getting involved with all your comments and suggestions. Please keep them coming. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to BrickSmart Workshop so you don't miss any of my new LEGO MOCs. And a special thank you to those of you who head over to Rebrickable and buy some of my lovingly created instructions on there. And a super thank you to those of you who've been clicking the super thanks button below this video and been making a small contribution that way. OK, let's get back to the dragons. The LEGO Ninjago Fire Dragon Attack set has 563 pieces and retails at £44.99 in the UK. The LEGO Hungarian Horntail Dragon set has 671 pieces and also retails at £44.99 in the UK. The Ninjago Dragon comes in a long line of many previous Ninjago Dragons as each of the Ninjago Ninjas ride their own dragon. The Hungarian Horntail Dragon, on the other hand, is part of the Harry Potter theme and there are not a lot of other dragons in this theme. This dragon is unique in that it not only comes on a stand, but that stand also doubles as a hand-cranked powered mechanism for making the dragon flap its wings. The Ninjago Fire Dragon is a two-legged dragon, but it has claws on its wings so these double as front legs. The Horntail is also a two-legged dragon and only has a single forward-facing claw on each wing. OK, well let's take a look at the builds now before we take a closer look. Let's start with the Fire Dragon Attack build.
that was the Fire Dragon Attack build. Ok, let's take a look at the Hungarian Horntail build. And that was the Hungarian Horntail build. I enjoyed the Fire Dragon Attack build, but it does suffer from the same problem a lot of dragon builds encounter. With such long necks and wings, they really have to cut down on the weight so the various joints don't collapse. For the head, this means using hollowed out preformed upper head and lower jaw pieces. These don't really feel like genuine Lego, and there is little to actually build so it feels like a bit of a cheat. For the wings, cloth covers are attached to a skeleton framework which can look ok, but again doesn't really feel like genuine Lego. The body and leg sections seem fine and are satisfying enough to build, but then we encounter the next big dragon problem. Feet. Feet can make or break a dragon build, and sadly, I didn't think much of the feet on this build. Using the triple angled bar pieces with three claws attached feels lazy and looks spindly and skeletal. Of course they need to be strong enough to hold up the weight of the whole model, and with the Technic joint used at the ankle, it does the job, but it does look very boxy on the feet, where they've tried to box in the joints. Why LEGO haven't brought out a Technic ball and socket joint piece with the ball on the top of a brick to help this situation, I'm not sure. Ok, this does all sound fairly damning, but as I mentioned before, these problems are recurring issues for dragons, not just poor design. In conclusion, I think this dragon does look good, and although I'm not a big fan of preformed dragon head parts, they do add to the look of the dragon overall. In addition, the movement and posability of the legs and wings does add to the playability of the set. The Horntail Dragon is a different beast entirely. There are over 100 more pieces, but it is the same price as the Fire Dragon Attack set. The design feels more authentic and original, 
like they've gone back to the drawing board and started again from first principles. The head still uses hollowed out preformed pieces, but the colour choice is excellent and the feet are probably the best dragon feet I've come across so far. They're much less bulky and clunky, but then the whole model is attached to a stand, so they don't need to support the weight of the model. In fact, to say the model is attached to a stand is a bit of an understatement. The first half of the whole build is the stand and the wing flapping mechanism, which, while very clever and enjoyable to build, you don't realise you're building a dragon at all until later. Then you realise the dragon and stand are fully connected and inseparable. You can't detach the dragon and play with it any other way. Once finished, the model looks great, but the wing flapping mechanism is a bit disappointing and clunky in operation. The wings rise smoothly enough, but on the downstroke, which should surely be the power stroke, they reach a certain point then just flop down. So while this model looks good for display with Harry attached, just out of the reach of the flame in front of the dragon, the amount of fun and time spent playing with this model is probably quite limited. You'll just get bored of turning the handle after about 10 rotations. If I had to choose, I prefer this one out of the two, because I really enjoyed the clever design, even if you still couldn't quite escape all the typical dragon problems, but kudos for trying. I've got two more dragons to take a look at next week, and one or two other things I'm working on before I release Deep Sea Creatures Part 15. If you can't wait, check out some of my MOCs on rebrickable.com. You've got to build them all, or maybe just pick and choose a few favourites. Just follow the link in the description below. And don't forget to look me up on Instagram for more good stuff and behind the scenes photos. And use the hashtag BritSmartWorkshop to tag your photos so I can see your creations. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. You made it this far, so why not give us a like or make a comment below? Click here if you'd like to see some of the LEGO Deep Sea Creatures series. Or here if you'd like to see some of my other LEGO Digital Creature builds. And don't forget to subscribe to BrickSmart Workshop so you don't miss any of my new MOCs.